This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Welcome friends, welcome to the End Time Hour on Eternal Radio. Friends, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not here today broadcasting this message in order to entertain, to bring the next bit of end time gossip or some fantastical idea for itching ears. A time is here, just like the Apostle Timothy warned, where people would no longer be satisfied with listening to sound doctrine, but would rather look for speakers who would tell them what their itching ears want to hear who Timothy says will reject the basic truths and chase after mere myths. Friends, what Timothy was saying here was that people would be less interested in Jesus Christ and a relationship with him and more interested in teachings that tantalise the senses for mere pleasure and amusement. Today, we live in an entertainment culture. People have become addicted to being entertained. Hours of precious time that can never be reclaimed is lost to entertainment. Friends, the people in Noah's day were living just the same. They were carrying on living regardless of the coming judgment that would sweep them and that world away forever. They couldn't escape. They were addicted to the hedonist lifestyles. It's all they knew and all they had. And Jesus warns us today, just as he warned his disciples back then. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in the days of Noah. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realise what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. And we can read that, friends, in Matthew 24. Friends, End Time Hour is not mere entertainment. If it was, I would quit right now. I've got more important things to do with my time. But friends, God woke me up in the night back in 2009 and he warned me that trouble was coming. And since then, I've made every effort to listen to the beckoning call of the Master and relay that message to anyone else who might listen. Friends, End Time Hour is a warning cry broadcasting out across the earth in these days of darkness to wake up a sleeping church, to wake up Christians and anyone else who chances upon this broadcast. Friends, there are those who say revival is coming and that's great and I too wait and believe for a time of refreshing for the saints of God in these days. We certainly need a great awakening to lift the church out of its malaise and to empower the people of God. But friends, there are also those who say only revival is coming and completely ignore the evidence stacking up all around us. They don't warn that great darkness is not only here, but that a tidal wave of wickedness is set to break upon the shores of our world in these days. Friends, that's why I do what I do. That's why I wrote Trumpet Blast Warning and Beyond Earthly Realms. And that's why I broadcast this message on Eternal Radio week in and week out. As the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 13. And do this, friends, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make absolutely no provision for the flesh to fulfil its lusts. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. Blessed be the Lord my 
music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. That was Laura Hackett, I Put On Christ. Friends, let's put on Christ. Let's wear him as we would wear armour. Let's make no provision for the flesh. The Lord is calling us to come up higher in these days to train us and to lead us into righteousness and victory against all the wickedness that is coming. This is the revival, friends. This is the great awakening. It's Jesus Christ himself revealed in us, the hope of glory. It's Jesus in us who empowers us to live the Christ life, to walk among the people living in darkness and to be the light of Christ to them. Just like the messianic prophecy of old found in Isaiah 9-2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Friends, deep darkness covers the earth and as I said earlier, a wave of wickedness is poised to break upon our shores. We need therefore to be ready. Let's not be taken off guard, but let's immerse ourselves in Jesus Christ and his word, which if we do, as Timothy writes, will thoroughly equip us for every good work. Friends, back in 1991, during a vision I received that lasted some 10 hours, the Lord showed me the saints of the Lord walking across the earth during the final stages of history. They were calm, at peace, while valiantly proclaiming the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Friends, that's where we all need to be, and I speak to myself here too. I'm not speaking as one who believes he has attained these things. I daily ask God for empowerment. I daily call upon the Lord for help to walk the Christ life in ever-increasing measure. Friends, shall we journey on this path together in these days of peril? Now, I want to talk more about the entertainment culture we live in today, because entertainment is one of the main weapons formed against us in these days. The Bible prophesies that in the last days the inhabitants of the earth will be deceived. Revelation 13 14 says he, Satan, deceived the inhabitants of the earth. And 2 Thessalonians 2 explains that in the end of days people will be deceived because they refuse to love the truth and so will live under a powerful delusion. That prophecy is being fulfilled right now through mass media entertainment disseminated through television for decades and now more recently through smart technologies and phones which it seems can't be put down for a single moment. A powerful delusion is deceiving the inhabitants of the earth. Friends did you know that they are now saying the first implantable mobile phone will be available commercially by 2023. That's implanted into our body. And of course, Google are on the record for saying that ultimate ambition is to literally get inside users' heads, using search queries to read our thoughts and then fulfilling our data needs by sending results directly to microchips implanted into our brains. And let's not forget, friends, the mark of the beast prophecy. No one can buy or sell unless they have the mark in their hand or in or on their forehead. Already, people are paying in the store with their mobile phone. The next advancement will be using that same technology, but from inside the body, in the hand or in the head, just as the Apostle John said. Friends, the entertainment of the masses is only set to increase in ways that just 20 to 30 years ago we could not have imagined possible. Why do you think there's been such a push for wearable tech devices over the last few years? The people are being conditioned to rely on technology to live their everyday lives. When did we ever need a smartwatch or fitness band to monitor our health on a daily basis? But when you think that health monitoring is one of the main functions of the implantable microchip today, you can see where they're taking this. With smart TVs, smart watches, smart glasses and virtual reality headsets and augmented reality games heralded by the likes of Pokemon Go, the peoples of the earth are being deceived as they immerse and merge themselves together with these devices that preoccupy our minds, dumb us down and condition us to accept the agenda of the global elite. 
Friends, also to point out is that through this conditioning, the peoples of the earth are enabling through all these devices that track our every move, the very surveillance grid that is and will eventually enslave them all. Just like the prophecy foretold, Satan deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Enormous control over the populations of the earth is achieved as the public is preoccupied with the mindless entertainment spewed from the myriad of devices now available wherever they go. While preoccupied, the people become completely oblivious to what is actually going on in the world. But friends, as I've said so many times before, it's not just the information that's going in. It's the way these technologies are interacting with our brains to put our minds into a certain vile state and reduce our intelligence. The flicker or the refresh rate of the screens we look at day in and day out literally alters our brain waves from beta normal waking consciousness to alpha similar to that which is produced in hypnotism. Studies have also been done that say playing computer games for long periods of time take the brain one step further to theta reduced consciousness or deep sleep. Also, studies conclude that too much TV increases the risk of Alzheimer's. Dr. Friedman, who led the study at the University School of Medicine in Cleveland, Ohio, said, when you watch TV, you can be in a semi-conscious state where you really are not learning. Friends, we become mesmerised and in a trance-like state. That's why so many people easily fall asleep in front of a TV screen, but then minutes later, when in bed, are unable to sleep. Have you ever done the same with your phone, been using it while in bed before sleeping and dropping off as you stare at that little square light, only to find that when you turn it off, you're not ready to sleep? That's the effect of these devices. They impact our brains on a physical level too. So not only are we absorbing propaganda, we are put into a servile state to receive it with little resistance. And now, more than ever before, we should be on our guard as the mass media corporations merge together and with our governments to create one single voice to shape our thoughts and beliefs. This is how we are being controlled and this is how the Antichrist world government will deceive the inhabitants of the earth. Friends, just recently I was mocked for believing that an Antichrist would control the world. Friends, those who mock are certainly asleep and dumbed down. It's surely plainly obvious Obvious that our governments and the mainstream media are or have already adopted an anti-Christian agenda. And what is that, friends, if it's not anti-Christ? Friends, but not all entertainment is bad. Reading a good old-fashioned book or going for a walk in the countryside, climbing a tree, rowing a boat across the lake or playing some sport with a friend. These are activities that were once commonplace but have now been replaced by movie going or running around like a mindless zombie catching Pokemons. Friends, let's make every effort to re-establish positive forms of entertainment in our lives that foster healthy relationships and increase our cognitive development and will assist to awaken us to the realities of our world. Let's think about ways in which we can limit technological forms of entertainment, have a day off from social media, reduce the hours of TV watching. Personally, I've now not watched TV for 15 years. It started one day when me and my wife just got tired of so much TV watching every day. We ended up limiting ourselves to just Friday night TV watching. But after not watching so much TV, we then found that the few programmes we limited ourselves to on a Friday night became unacceptable for us to watch. TV desensitises us but as we withdraw from it we become sensitive to the information we are taking in. It's time friends for us to amputate this festering technology from our lives because if we don't it will one day end up literally inside us and there will be no way of escaping from it. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. That was Royal Taylor Control. 
prominent globalist and former national security advisor Dr. Brzezinski uttered a statement as far back as 1970 that proves that the elite's ultimate aim is to completely control humanity through total surveillance. Brzezinski said, The technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values. Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities. He concluded that the people will become so brainwashed and dumbed down that they'll be unable to individually think for themselves and will unwittingly give up control of their lives to the elite. Friends, what Brzezinski said 46 years ago is coming to pass before our very eyes. Society is now dominated by the elite who are unrestrained by traditional values. Think about the promotion by our leaders of same-sex marriage, LGBT rights, abortion rights, and now some are even beginning to talk about paedophile rights. The secularisation and destruction of morality is fully underway and immorality is being exalted, while at the same time religious freedom is being trampled underfoot. And all this is heralded via mainstream media media entertainment. It's embedded in movies and TV shows, documentaries and news broadcasts, showing what was once shameful to be something perfectly normal and to be proud of. And the continuous surveillance that Brzezinski predicted is now also upon us. This has always been the goal of the elite throughout history, to lock its people down through surveillance. The difference now, friends, is that no other dictatorship has ever had this kind of ability to watch over its citizens. And the crazy thing is, we are being conditioned to set up the very system that is controlling us. We're constantly bombarded with the next must-have gadget that's going to revolutionise our lives to keep us safe, to monitor our well-being or to make life more convenient. Convenient. Aaron Russo, a Hollywood director and documentary filmmaker, befriended a Rockefeller who shared with him the secret goals of the elite. He said in an interview, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be in those chips right. There'll be no more cash. And this is given me straight from Rockefeller himself. All money will be in the chips. And so instead of having cash, any time you have money in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally, total control. And if you're like me or you and you're protesting with what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip and you have nothing. You can't buy food and you can't do anything. It's total control of the people. Everything is in there. So they want a one world government controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all the money in those chips and they control the chips, and they control the people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intention. Now, according to Russo, on asking Rockefeller what was the point of doing all of this, he just replied, the end goal was to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society, to have the bankers, the elite people, controlling the world. Friends, what Rockefeller described to Rousseau was without doubt the fulfilment of the mark of the beast prophesied by the Apostle John 2,000 years ago. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell. It's coming our way, friends. All it will need is the right kind of crisis to implement it. Just like David Rockefeller said, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. Every day we hear more and more news relating to wearable tech and the implantable chip. The agenda to chip us is gathering pace. This year, wearable tech will be everywhere at the Summer Olympics in Brazil. 
Visa, one of the Olympic Committee's main business partners, has created a ring that will allow people to pay for things at the Olympic Village simply by waving their hand. Smart augmented reality glasses are also on hand for the US cycling team for improved performance and of course smart bands too to monitor sleep and heart rate. Then reportedly plans are also underway to stream 85 hours of programming from the event in virtual reality. And just a few days ago, CBS reported on two people, Tim Shank and Chrissy Heishman, who have undergone the procedure to have an implant in the hand, allowing them to open doors and use instead of a password. Shank tellingly said in the report, I'm hoping that this will make it possible for me to not have to carry a wallet or credit cards. So friends, it's plain to see where all this is heading, isn't it? And that's why we need to draw up close to Jesus Christ in these last days so that we are not taken off guard and outwitted by the devil and his evil schemes, who, as the scriptures declare, is prowling around like a roaring lion, just waiting for someone to devour. Let's be alert and on our guard and see where this is all heading. Let's resist the temptation to spend time absorbing mindless entertainment through our TV screens and smartphones, and let's adopt more traditional forms of entertainment. Let's not be fooled by wearable tech, but let's rather wear Christ in these days. Let's put off wearables and put on Christ. And let's not forget to go to church and to meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's draw up close to Jesus Christ in worship and through immersing ourselves in the word of God that we would be enabled in this evil day to stand up against all tyranny and against all the evil that is poised to flood our nations in the coming days. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. Keep me close to you, Lord. Where the winds may blow, only you will know. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. That was Forerunner Music, Keep Me Close. That's my prayer every day, friends. Jesus, keep me close to you. Okay, now for some end time prophecy in the news. Now this from The Telegraph, broadcasters to offer Olympic audiences virtual reality viewing. The sandy shores of Copacabana Beach may be nearly 6,000 miles away, but when the Rio Olympics gets underway on Friday, viewers will be able to soak up the atmosphere inside the stadium like never before, as organisers make use of virtual reality technology for the first time. Users will be able to attach their phone to a 15 pound cardboard headset made by Google which will allow them to turn their heads and look around the Olympic venues as events such as beach volleyball, boxing and athletics take place. The chief executive of Olympic Broadcasting Services, the agency that provides the video feeds, said earlier this year that the technology would give fans the opportunity to feel like they were physically present at the Games. Friends, virtual reality is sensory deception. It could quite easily be a key player in the end time deception of humanity. Imagine how this technology could be utilised to deceive the masses in the future. Okay, now this from the San Francisco Chronicle, chip enhanced political candidates coming soon. Now this article is written by Zoltan Istvan, who is the 2016 presidential candidate for the Transhumanist Party. Now he writes, as the 2016 presidential candidate for the San Francisco based transhumanist party, I may be the first candidate to get chipped. However, I'm guessing that by the 2020 elections, other candidates will also have them. The chip implant movement is being led by biohackers, mostly young kids who have taken body modification into the technological realm. Their aim, like mine, is to one day become a cyborg. And some already have much technology in their bodies, such as tiny speakers surgically implanted near their ears to wirelessly hear music from their smartphones. The merger of humans with machines is well underway. Zoltan continues, on my recent campaign bus tour across America, especially in the South, 
Religious people complained to me that my implant was the mark of the beast, where the Antichrist tags human beings to spur the coming apocalypse. Okay, now this from the Retail Times headline reads, Europe approaching cashless society, finds Fung Global Retail and Technology Report. Europe soon could be looking at the exit of cash from day-to-day -day transactions as smartphone technology supports digital money, says mobile payments supporting Europe's move to a cashless society. A just-released report from global think tank Fung Global Retail and Technology. The process is already well underway in some European countries, with some retailers, transportation companies and even bank branches no longer accepting cash. Leading payment operators expect that all payment terminals in Europe will be NFC ready by 2020, said Weinswig. Some Western European countries are on the path to becoming near cashless societies and mobile face-to-face -face payments are likely to play a significant role in this shift. Then also the Herald Sun reads why our looming cashless society will come at a devastating cost. Make no mistake, we are moving at lightning speed towards a cashless society. Within a generation, notes and coins will almost certainly be redundant, not just in practice, but made so by law. Shops and other businesses will be banned from accepting them. Banks will no longer distribute them. Physical currency will be consigned to history, gathering dust on the shelves of collectors' shops and in the recesses of our couches, and the consequences will at once be brilliant and grey. The article goes on and then ends by asking, will we tolerate this brave new world? Arguably, the writer for the Herald Sun says, we've already given our consent and we keep giving it 543 million times every month when we tap, swipe and click to pay. Let us hope we are doing it with our eyes open. It may be convenient, but it will come at a steep price. Friends, it's so easy to see what's happening, isn't it? While wearable tech and various other cashless payment devices are being thrust upon us as the alternative and more convenient ways to pay, an agenda is also underway to replace physical money with digital. And let's not be deceived into thinking that a cashless society is okay and something to gladly embrace. A cashless society equals economic totalitarianism. We become the whim of the power powerful elite. All our money will be digital. We'll have no physical money. We'll be at the mercy of the banking system. If you lose confidence in your bank, you can't withdraw your money. Or if you've been labelled a terrorist by the government because you're anti-abortion or believe in end-time Bible prophecy, as government documents show, our money could be frozen or even deleted. A cashless society is the ultimate form of control and it will end in the prophesied mark of the beast. Okay, now this from the Washington Times, Satanic Prayer opens Pensacola City Council meeting. Police forced to remove protesters. A city council meeting in Pensacola, Florida turned chaotic Thursday evening when officials allowed a local religious freedom activist to start the event with a satanic prayer. Hundreds of attendees began protesting and about a third walked out as Satanic Temple of West Florida member David Sohar delivered the invocation inside City Hall, a local ABC affiliate reported. The Pensacola City Council traditionally begins its meetings with Christian prayer, but it had agreed to give Mr. Soha the podium after President Charles Barr determined that refusing his request to make the invocation would lead to possible litigation. Mr. Soa's attempt to deliver the invocation in a hooded black robe were repeatedly disrupted by protesters, including some who stood up and tried to drone out his address with the Lord's Prayer. Others, meanwhile, had to be removed from the building by Pensacola police, according to the station. Several residents approached the podium after the invocation was delivered and took aim at the city's decision to give a speaking slot to Mr. Soa, who is currently involved in legal efforts to have a 25-foot cross removed from Bayview Park in Pensacola. Now friends, this is a perfect example, isn't it, of what I was talking about earlier. An antichrist spirit is rising within the political realm and it will eventually see the installation of a world leader who is antichrist, just as the Bible predicted. 
Now, some may need more convincing that an antichrist spirit is on the rise. Well, how about this from RT? Satanic Temple rolls out after school program for kids. The Satanic Temple is planning to bring Lucifer to school by rolling out extracurricular clubs across the US. After School Satan is the temple's response to a Supreme Court ruling allowing evangelical religious programs to operate in schools. Currently, nine clubs are listed as participating in the program, including Los Angeles, Salt Lake City and Washington, D.C. The clubs will focus on rationalism, free inquiry and fun, according to a promotional video. The Temple is taking aim at the Good News Club, an interdenominational Christian program for 5 to 12 year olds operating in over 3,500 public schools across the US. The club's curriculum was created by the Child Evangelism Fellowship and includes Bible studies. The Satanic Temple said it is not interested in operating after school Satan clubs in school districts that are not already hosting the Good News Club. Friends, this is an all out assault on Christian. Christianity and its end time Bible prophecy being fulfilled today. Revelation 13 7 reads, Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and conquer them, and it was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. Eternal Radio sounds to energize your faith. We'll see Jesus face to face. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Romans 13, 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Friends, it's time for us to put on Christ, and maybe to put him on like we've never done before. It's time to get into the prayer closet and commune together with Jesus in these extreme days. Great darkness is covering the earth, and friends, if we are not found in Christ, and we're kind of sitting on the fence or getting preoccupied with the things of this world, the entertainment that is so addictive and time-consuming, then we will find it very hard not to get swept away by the darkness that is here and is coming. Friends, I watched a video the other day of a Chinese lady who was saved from drowning as floodwaters rose above her waist. She was saved by her loving husband who had managed to strap her to a wooden post before he himself was swept away to his death. Friends, let's allow Jesus to strap us to the cross that we would be saved and rescued from the evil that is poised to cascade upon our nations in these days. Friends, I don't say these things to spark fear because when we are found in Christ, there is no fear, is there? I say these things so that we can be prepared and not be lost and in a state of confusion, faltering in our faith, bewildered because we don't understand how it seems that God has now left. Friends, that's why it's so important we go deeper into the Lord so that we will instinctively know that persecution, tribulations and any other trials have absolutely nothing to do with God having left us. He said, didn't he, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said that, didn't he, friends? I will never leave you nor forsake you. There can be no better way to prepare for calamity than to be clothed in Christ Jesus, standing complete in him and full of the joy of heaven, regardless of what trial is going on around us. Friends, shall we pray together? Hallelujah. Father God, I want to pray for everyone listening to this broadcast today. Father God, that you would descend upon them with your perfect peace in the face of any trial that the listeners are going through today. Father God, would they know so well in their soul that you are 
good no matter what. And Father God, I pray that you would help us all in these last days to use our time wisely and to not become preoccupied with the mainstream media entertainment that is all around us. Father God, let us clothe ourselves in you, that we would become preoccupied with you. And Father, all we would want to do is to be together with you in your presence. Hallelujah. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world. Online, on tablet, on smartphone and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.